What is up homies? Welcome back to another episode of Heroes Reforged. Today we're doing something a little bit different, just like in July when we tackled the many, many, many phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going to be talking about the major announcement today. James Gunn and Peter Safran unveiled the new slate for the DC Universe. And that is how you celebrate, my friend. <laughs> James Gunn has been teasing this for quite a while. He was saying that it was going to happen sometime in January. He could have just told us it was going to be on the literal last day of the month. That would have been mm -hmm. totally fine. Um, but before we get into the slate, worth mentioning, we opened and started a second channel for the Chexkins podcast. It's linked down in the description below. Check it out. We have one episode on there. We're going to be doing those every single month, maybe multiple times per month as well. We're going to be incorporating questions from the audience, topics wait, wait, that wait, we Adam, want to discuss. What's up? What is the, what is the Chexkins podcast? What is is it? It's, uh, what does it look like? What is the point of it? <laughs> well, considering that most people who saw that video were like, I didn't even know you guys did a podcast together in the same room. I'm like, good Lord. Thank God we put this thing on its own channel. But it is a podcast uh -huh. that we do where we all get together and we talk about stuff we're passionate about. It could be related to superheroes. It could be related to life. It could be t it could be related to the holidays. Whatever we feel like it. We also take questions from the audience. And it's a very, 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 very fun time. Last episode was dedicated from the Patreon exclusively audience. to our Patreon oh, audience. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, mm -hmm. on February February 11th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, we're going to be doing a live stream to celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers on the channel. Join Yay! us. You can submit a video, whether it's a whether it's a congratulations or you have a question for us. There will be links down in the description below on how you can do that. You can email it to us at submissions at heroesreforge.com. You have until February 6th to do so. On top of that, <laughs> check out our Patreon. We have a ton of uncut reactions for all the shows and movies we're watching. We're going to be doing a lot of films this upcoming year. We're going to be doing Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ant-Man, the Creed movies, so much stuff. Check it out. Link down in the description mm -hmm. as well. And uh, Star Trek based, is happening soon. Star Trek Star is happening. Trek and based on We're everything that we found out forever. today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we might have to be revisiting some DC movies <laughs> soon. <laughs> I will be totally honest with you guys. I actually was surprised how many projects were announced in this slate. I was expecting maybe five things. I thought it was going to be one or two big movies, maybe one or two big shows, and maybe something animated and obscure massively obscure because that's James Gunn style. He likes to do the stuff that is very much prime time, but he also is mm -hmm. very much dig about digging into the deepest, darkest crevices of the DC and Marvel archives yeah. and pulling out stuff that is so obscure that majority of audiences have never even seen the cover of a comic book. He did exactly that. He delivered. Yeah. He delivered. Absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot of exciting stuff in here. There's a lot of exciting stuff that I'm sure wasn't announced yet, but before we get into sort of what's part of the new DC universe, it's kind of worth talking about what is still coming this year because there are four projects still coming this year. We've got Shazam, Fury of the Gods coming out in March. It's a loose mm -hmm. tie into the greater DC universe. Like James Gunn said, it ties in because it's a part of the you know, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill universe, but it doesn't include think, any of those other characters. You know what I think that means? I think it means that it is a creatively and financially, we still haven't decided Decided what we want to do with this and creatively and financially if it's a hit if people really like it we will keep the shazam character and the 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 story sort of created in these two movies and maybe the director and maybe the writing team whatever maybe the cast maybe not the lead actor uh depending on what <laughs> if, how it all goes down but um but it by the way james gunn did address that too he said like sometimes actors tweet things that i disagree with and i can't shift my mm -hmm. entire plans based on you know when an actor yeah. says something yeah. i disagree with but then he also acknowledged he goes but if somebody's doing something that is like heinously wrong harmful, <laughs> yeah like we have that needs to be addressed which i think is like just i think that's a very mature and accurate way to look at that situation mm -hmm. i think it means that like shazam may fold into the dc universe but it may not because if this movie comes out and it's maybe it's a bit of a dud, maybe it doesn't hit with audiences for whatever reason, maybe they will say, hey, uh, David Sandberg, you did a great job directing these two Shazam movies. We'll have you do another project if you want to keep working with us. But mm -hmm. Shazam is done. And maybe they'll revisit because, mm -hmm. again, like you said, Adam, it comes with that baggage of like it's technically in the same universe as like the Black Adam movie that is not continuing. And technically that same Superman suit that appears in the movie is the Henry Cavill Superman, which is not continuing. And I'm sure that their new Superman is going to have a new look. So it's like. Uh, do they do they I think they just creatively want to leave that door open and financially and like, you know, executive wise, they want they don't want to say one way or the other. Don't go see the new movie because it's not going to be part of our universe, but they don't want to see go see mm -hmm. it. It's definitely going to fold into our. So yeah. That's what I, that's yeah. what I think. Yeah. It means. I think that's I part think of right. the uh, disadvantage of inheriting a universe instead of starting a universe from scratch is you're going to inherit yeah. the good. You're going to inherit the bad and you're going to inherit the question marks. 
and you have to kind of deal with all of that stuff. And that is something mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. Peter yeah. Safran and James Gunn have discussed pretty much all day. And every single article that I've read is, you know, a lot of stuff, they're still figuring it out. And if there's an opportunity for for some of the characters and actors from the DC Extended Universe, unofficial title, to... Yeah roll over then they'll cross that bridge when they come to it but nothing is set in stone and even the slate that we're going to talk about that is also not set in stone we got a piece of the slate Mm -hmm. james gunn said that it's very malleable that it can shift and move and we're kind of used to that from the marvel cinematic universe as well like they literally will announce a slate in july at Mm comic-con and within four weeks it's changed so that's Mm -hmm. just how it is when you're making these things and it's all part of a greater interconnected universe the next project is an interesting one because this is officially (laughs) the project that is said to reset the dc universe this is the flash Uh, so whatever that means that's still very up in the air (laughs) james gunn did say that he actually genuinely loves this movie to me that movie is the one that i'm like i kind of just wish it would already come out just so we could kind of move on and get through this stuff because (laughs) there's a lot of question marks and i had a lot my biggest frustration with today was there are characters that kind of cross over and could potentially continue including shazam flash blue beetle and aquaman i'm like okay if stories are going to be rebooted how right. are you able to then kind of omit that continuity and then fold it into your universe so lots lots of those types of does this make sense is this a terminator 2 type of situation right. where the continuity is kind of going to be broken for a couple of years until we kind of get to the start of what what's coming i i want to get your guys's take on this because i kept seeing people today talk about is it going to be weird if gal gadot for example is still wonder woman but then she's in a movie standing next to a new superman and a new batman Right. The idea that like the previous reality, some of the actors, Jason Momoa is still Aquaman, but there'll be new versions of other characters and they're either going to look around and pretend like they've known them all along or they're going to meet again for the first time. Like what's your guys' take on that? Does it matter? How sort of like universe breaking is it? Because there's also the example and maybe this is the best one I can come up with is Judy Dench played M in right. the Pierce Brosnan James Bond movies. And then when they, when it was a clean reboot, it was a straight up new reality. It was not, you know, vague. With Daniel Craig, she was still M because she's such a good actor. It seems like they're doing that with Viola Davis. Like she is Amanda Waller all the time, always. <laughs> For Amanda Waller, I think that that's, it's kind of like M from James Bond. I'm like, that's kind of perfect. That's great. Yeah. Is it different with Superman and Batman standing next to old Wonder Woman, old Aquaman? And again, you were talking about The Flash, Adam. They asked about Ezra Miller and they were like, we haven't decided yet. We haven't figured out what we want to do. Ezra Miller seems to be committed to like getting better and whatever that means. And so again, I think it's like coming down to like financially, we don't want to say, you know, how, how well yeah. this movie's going to do. And then yeah. we'll, we'll, I think a we'll lot of it, it out also, there, but, I could be wrong, but it also could come down to contractual obligations. Cause a lot of these actors who started in the Snyderverse probably signed contracts for multiple Justice League films, multiple, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, solo films featuring their characters. And I think the only way for Warner Brothers to kind of get out of that is to probably pay out those actors. And maybe for Warner Brothers, it's like, it's not financially worth it. (laughs) I don't know. I'm not a lawyer and I don't work at Warner Brothers. I I do want to get your guys' take. Augustine, what do you think about that? Like older actors with new actors thing? Like, is it a problem? Um, To me, it is. To me, it's an absolute universe breaking problem because it's it's so recent like if it had been if it had been like maybe five ten years since we've seen like a dc movie or just you know like where it wasn't in kind of like the 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 popular things that people are talking about where people keep you know bringing up the old justice league movies and bringing up you know wonder woman and all of this stuff that happened and there's there's a big group of people that we can't ignore that just want that to happen and and to come back right at the same time our ours i can't speak necessarily for you guys but my experience with a particular fandom has been almost 100% negative and has is almost inseparable from the other version of these 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 characters right and so to me it's universe and and world breaking because whenever i see those characters i think of all those negative interactions i had with those fans and all the harassment and stuff that came and so i'm just right. like you know what it's it's like that conversation we were having on Chexicans the other day it's like when can you separate the actors from the action right and this isn't on yeah. the actors or 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 anybody involved in the creative process it's just a part of the baggage that comes with these characters. And I don't want that mm-hmm. baggage, which is why this whole 2023 slate is the the thorn in my side, dude. Like it <laughs> can't let me get excited about anything coming up to 2025 and and it, and past it because yeah. I need to know how Flash resets everything. 
Like, I just need to know how this is going to happen. Augustine, if it makes you feel any better, the silver lining here is that the Latino superhero, Blue Beetle, seems to be so disconnected that has no actors from the previous (laughs) DCEU that it's like it may be able to squeak by and be like, "Uh, this is connected to the new thing. Like, because it just seems like, you know, we've seen. But then again, who knows? Maybe they filmed like a, you know, John Cena has a cameo in it or something. Like maybe there's some, you know, I don't know. Will Smith comes back as Deadshot. I don't know. I don't know what kinds of decisions they're making. (laughs) I have no idea what they're doing. But that's that's, to to go off that though. It's that's what's the thorn in my side about these announcements in total. Right. Because Adam and I were talking today. I could I could feel Adam's excitement buzzing like just all day long. Right. And 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 he would look at me and I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. It's like it's all right. Damn, like, dude. Eh. Literally, yeah, literally, I was like, all right, so we're gonna film something, right? And he's like, eh. and I'm like, what? Yeah, sure. Wow. <laughs> this is like uh right, but they're like you 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 guys are like Wednesday and Wednesday's roommate. Wednesday's roommate's all bright and colorful, excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wednesday's just like I don't Which is typically Jason opposite behavior anymore. for us. <laughs> right. Normally, normally it's opposite, but like I said, there's a lot of baggage that comes with this fandom, and I, I feel like right. I'm just waiting to see what happens with the reboot and, mm. and Blue Beetle and potentially how they're going to treat Aquaman and how that reboot because there's been murmurings that Jason Momoa has met with James Gunn about Lobo. So right. it's just like, yeah, okay, right. so, and James, yeah. so, so I'm to, just anxiously awaiting this reboot. So to clarify yeah. that, since you brought it up, yeah. he's not going to be playing Lobo. What? Uh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. a lie, dude. Yeah. So Hang on. <laughs> let me check my Mori Povich lie detector. Yeah, yeah. Check, check, check. Check. That was a lie. No. Uh-uh. You so, are the father. When it comes to when it, when it comes to Blue Beetle and Aquaman, so like you were saying, Hector, Blue Beetle, it doesn't really have any sort of connective threats to the other films. It seemed like maybe it could have at some point, but that's not the case anymore. So for that movie to kind of slip its way into the greater DC universe that James Gunn is doing, and to have Shola Maridueña show up in another film is totally possible. And he could just be Blue Beetle of that universe maybe even show up in the Mm -hmm. booster gold series that we'll talk about aquaman and the lost kingdom another film that has heavy ties to the snyderverse i'm definitely in this similar camp like augustine all of that comes with a lot of baggage and james gunn was Mm -hmm. the guy that did say we knew what we were walking into we were walking into a very fractious universe Mm -hmm. and we knew Mm -hmm. that some of the decisions that we were going to make a lot of fans would agree with and a lot of fans would disagree with so in my eyes when i see that to me that signifies we'll just Cut it and go clean. Just start fresh. Get new actors. Let, you know, run the marketing budget for 2023 on these four films. Give them equal amount of marketing. Give them an equal amount of love. Let these actors have their opportunities to be in these films. Let these stories have an opportunity to be told. Support the directors. Support the creative people that worked on all these films. And then next year say, hey, that's it. We're starting fresh. And if Mm -hmm. if Viola Davis is the one actor who carries over as Amanda Waller, Cool. If that means so replacing John Cena, if that means replacing all the characters and actors from Peacemaker, it sucks. Yeah. But yeah. you got to do what you got to well, do. We, we'll get more into that later because I also don't think that's going to happen. And I and I, no, it's not going to happen. I feel like with hiring James Gunn, they basically said, "Look, we know that we have a bunch of different visions for what the yeah. DC brand is right now. We want to invest in yours. Let's let Matt Reeves do what he's going to do because that that movie made money. Let's let Todd Phillips do what he's going to do because the first Joker movie made." a billion dollars but yeah (laughs) this the suicide squad can effectively be the future vision of the dc brand right and that means like because when we get to it i mean we can kind of jump into it now but just to go back a bit about the that flash universe reset for years i was like don't do it it's too confusing and weird to try to do Mm -hmm. any kind of flashpoint thing not for comic book audiences but for mainstream movie audiences it's confusing it's weird if you tell me that Ben Affleck is Batman, but then the Flash changes the universe and now it's a different actor, but Jason Momoa stays the same. I'm like, there's there's too many variables and too many weird comic book shit that we're used to dealing with because we read comic books. It's fine. But now I'm looking at it and I'm like, I might be convinced that this is the absolute best thing to do because it feels like they might have either already shaped the movie or the movie was already kind of always going to be this way. It's going to be this declarative statement to mm-hmm. movie audiences being like, the universe has changed. Going forward, it's this. Yeah. That might be the way that that happens. And it's, and it's, crazy because it's it's effectively marketing which sounds cynical but also the flashpoint comic that it's based off of was marketing it was marketing the new 52 the entire mm-hmm. company-wide line reboot of yeah. dc comics so i feel like this might be 
some sneaky marketing in there and it might be, you know, because I remember when, when um, a, a friend of mine went to go see Spider-Man Homecoming and she was like, wait, I thought Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man. Like there are people who are not up right. on the fact that different mm -hmm. studios and different realities and different universes and now a multiverse and jumping into this chapter one, gods and monsters, by the way, Adam, gorgeous image you've created. Let's put that up on screen one more time. Just a, beaut, just a beautiful beaut of an image right here. Shout out shout out to Brazil, right, Augustine? Shout out to Brazil. Yeah, for shout just, out to Brazil. They're bro. running with that graphic. Work, man. With man. They love your work, Adam. <laughs> you, when, you, you were saying, Adam, like there, there may not be holdover, but I feel like James Gunn is going to do what's in his best interest for yeah. the people he worked with, for his collaborators. For sure. Creature Commandos features Weasel in that animated show. Right. You know he's mm -hmm. going to be voiced by his brother, Sean. On Gunn, who played Weasel. Yeah. Yep. Waller has Viola Davis coming back, and he said the live action Waller show has her teaming up with Team Peacemaker. So you know mm -hmm. Cena and all those people are going to be in it. And he said mm -hmm. because he's writing Superman, Peacemaker season two has kind of been put on hold. Mm -hmm. Really, Waller's going to be like season 1.5. Like it's the right. bridge the between, in between both of these. Especially after the, the revelation at the end of season one of what Task Force X and Amanda and Amanda Waller are, then that kind of yeah. blows the door open in the DC universe, which is why Creature Commandos is actually even happening because she needs to create a new Task Force X to take but, on, right. you know, some new villains. That, but that might be a show set in the past. My theory was because one of the sure. characters is not Rick Flagg Jr., but Rick Flagg Sr. Right. My theory was that the Creature Commandos is a show set in like the 70s or something, set in like the 80s. That's Rick Flagg's father was like the original leader of like a Task Force X, mm -hmm. right? I think they've already kind of established that in the Suicide Squad movies, I think. And so that just means that Weasel is very long lived, that Weasel is, it's not a sequel, but it's it might be a prequel. Sure. And maybe Amanda Waller's in that show. Maybe, I don't know. You might be right. It might Amanda be a, Waller a is in the show. Right. It might be a, but I'm saying, is it her when she's younger? And in because career? it's animated, like, you can kind of get away with doing anything. You can write it yeah, in the past, right. you know, in the present right. time. So I think I think that's what that show has going for it. It's a it's a really cool cast of characters. I don't know yeah. uh, Creature Commandos. I've never read the comic book, but the show is going to have Rick Flagg Sr., Nina Mazursky, Dr. Phosphorus, Eric Frankenstein, G.I. Robot, Weasel, and the Bride of Frankenstein. It's an amazing lineup. <laughs> and of course, James Gunn starting Chapter One, God's Monsters with something obscure is a very James Gunn thing to do. And then following mm -hmm. it up with Waller with Viola Davis, a live action series that takes place in between Peacemaker season one and two is a great way to then kind of establish what is Amanda Waller's role in this right. rebooted right. DC universe. Is she going to be more or less the, the same, same character? Is she going to be a slightly her, altered version? Who knows? Put her in everything. Put her in everything. The biggest mistake, and it, this movie made a lot of mistakes, the Green Lantern movie from 2011 did, is it cast Angela Bassett as Amanda Waller. Hello. And then killed her off at the end of that movie. And I'm like, Amanda Waller mm -hmm. is DC's Nick Fury, but cooler in <laughs> yeah, a lot what of did ways. You like, she, like, mm -hmm. like, That's like she, if Nick Fury she, showed up at the end credit scene in Iron Man, it was like, boom, and killed him. And then, and then was dead. <laughs> what? So yeah, put Viola <laughs> Davis in Superman Legacy, yeah. put her in Lanterns, put her in Authority, yeah. put her in, and put her in everything. Then the, then the big show, right? So Peter Safran and James Gunn have kind of said that Creature Commandos and Waller are sort of an appeti appetizer and a moose-bouche, as they said in the press release. <laughs> Uh, Superman Legacy <laughs> is officially more or less the real starting point of the DC universe. It's going to be a brand new live action film. It's going to have a brand new Superman. It's going to be my favorite part, a four quadrant Superman movie <laughs> for everyone. Wow. You guys smell that? You guys smell that? That's hope. Mm, that's refreshing. <laughs> that's true. Hope. That's, the, that's, the that's justice. Uh, and that's a better tomorrow. Uh, and <laughs> oh I cannot wait. I cannot yeah. wait. Yeah. This, this is this is uh I th this is gonna be my most anticipated project in this whole thing. And for me, yeah. no disrespect to any movie that comes before this. This to me is the movie that is for me going to either be sink or swim. If you don't nail this, I'm out. If you nail yeah, this, mm -hmm. you got me for the rest of the entire mm -hmm. time that you're building mm -hmm. out this universe. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. it's super, super important for Superman to work because the one of the things that I've really liked about everything that I've been reading about this presentation is James Gunn has very much said, the DC universe is expansive, not only character-wise, but also tonally. So you can have mm -hmm. characters like Superman yeah. who are very hopeful and very optimistic about the world, and yes, there are people that exist in the world, regular people and superheroes and villains who are pessimistic, yep. but that mm -hmm. is sort of the struggle that Superman has to deal with in this universe. And the movie mm -hmm. is supposed to sort of deal with Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage, his human upbringing, and especially being a character 
of his caliber who exists in the world that maybe is more cynical. What does that mean? And I think right. that's something right. that we haven't really explored. And if we've explored it, for me personally, it hasn't worked. Um, and it's the only project right. as of right now uh, that has a release date, July 11th, 2025. So mm -hmm. I'm super, super excited for this one. I can't wait. How, how, how excited was Adam today? How, ex <laughs> how, how was the vibrations <laughs> coming from Adam's before room the over there? Before the announcement, before the announcement, Adam was like, I don't know why I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right before the announcement. And it's just like, I was like, okay, Adam's really, really hyped for this thing. And I think it's because of this project. And I'm very excited for this project too. I was, I forgot there was a video I watched. I don't know who it was from, and I'm sorry if the creator watches this, but they were talking about how now more than ever, we need a Superman that brings hope and levity to these situations. Like there's, yeah. there's so many real world situations nowadays that just feel insurmountable by us normal people, right? Mm. And what we need to do is we need to connect to Superman on that level. We need to find those things that not even Superman can beat but still hold on to that hope that Superman brings to everything that he encounters. And I feel mm -hmm. like that is the type of Superman that we need nowadays because we have so many other characters that he can play off of. Like you were saying, Adam, it's it's multi, you know, it's got multiple uh, I, personalities and themes and ideas that mm -hmm. he can bounce off of everybody and be like, just the, the I'm sure most people or some people have friends that's just like, ultimately happy we have matt acevedo like just the ultimate yeah. beacon of joy right just like you talk to this person and nothing can yeah. get him down and they just yeah. brighten your day and i want that to play against sourpuss batman who's just like get off me clark <laughs> like he's hugging he's hugging bruce and he's like get off me yeah like, just that kind of like thing and then just like wonder woman laughing in the background and then the lanterns just kind of doing their thing and just yeah i i need that kind of Balance. I, I think it's just like reflection of reality, really, like reflection yeah. of reality that lets you communicate, uh, lets you connect to these characters in different ways, in different aspects of your own personality, because we're not all always bright and happy and like, right. you know, yeah. super cheery or whatever. So yeah. finding each one of finding something you can connect to with each one of these characters, I think is really going to be important in the future. And I think James Gunn knows that and wants to create something like that. I think I want to ask you guys too. Have you seen Ted Lasso? Have we talked about yes. this before? Yeah, we talked about it, but we haven't seen it. I saw it. But okay. I think yeah. that the pendulum has is swinging in that direction. I think that mm -hmm. 10 years ago, 20, this past 20 years of pop culture, you know, post 9-11, it was a very cynical time, right? Christopher Nolan had his take on, on the world post September 11th, post Bush administration, and he reflected that through Batman. And right. I think mm -hmm. that that the past five, 10 years have had that kind of like that pushback of the the grounded storyline in a in a fantastical world. We had Jason Bourne change the action movie genre to something more right. grounded. Everything was gritty and grounded. And because mm -hmm. of this, like yeah. this this world of the, uh, you know, of our modern society the past 20 years. But I think the pendulum has been moving towards things like people are watching Ted Lasso and they're going, oh, my God, I need this. Yeah. This is so mm -hmm. refreshing. Yeah. This is so enriching and hopeful. And that's a character who like I've seen people describe the Ted Lasso character as someone who who embodies like toxic positivity. And I can see that, too. I think that even <laughs> even yeah, within yeah. that show, it's that that element is kind of explored. But like Superman is just this like golden retriever puppy dog. And he is not the smartest person on the planet. And he is mm. maybe the strongest person on the planet, but he's probably the goodest. Did you just and say Superman sweetest. is dumb? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> no, but you know, I also as don't as Bruce, listen. Right? No, yeah. No, yeah. Sh no shade. I think that there's like a, I think that there's like a naivete to that character a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But but mm -hmm. it's one of his best qualities. Okay. Yeah. This mm -hmm. this almost like childlike sense of like, well, no, that's that's morally wrong to do, and right. I'm going to do this because mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas adult and cynical people are going, yeah, but the world's more complex than that. But right. really, at the end of the day. That's kind of what Superman represents. But again, no shade to Grant Morrison, who a lot of their writing, James Gunn listed as like their comic book writing is like being very All -Star influential Superman kind of and, yeah. for this new thing. But like in yeah. All-Star Superman, Superman at one point in the story is like super, super genius. And that's really mm -hmm. Silver Age fun kind of extreme. But I like it when Superman is just this guy. He's just this, this yeah. guy from Kansas who's just trying. Mm -hmm. And in right that thing. press release, Adam, they were saying like his greatest weakness is not kryptonite. His greatest weakness is he doesn't want to kill anybody. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. And look yeah. at the job he's taken on, Superman. And look at the, you know, he has to go up against people like Lex Luthor, who's an untouchable billionaire. Right. Those kinds of themes are more relevant today than ever yeah. be fucking mm -hmm. for. 
Yeah. Because mm-hmm. of the world we're living in. Yeah. So, um, so Adam's getting it, goosebumps it, it, over there. Adam's, Adam's getting all yeah, tingly. It's, Things are happening over and, here. And, <laughs> and people have made the comparison to like Captain America, Steve Rogers, but even Captain America in a way, that character is like an older man because he's literally 90 or 100 years right, old or whatever right. you know he says things like son don't and he's yeah. so serious and he's so he takes on the weight of the world onto his shoulders and mm-hmm. clark is like that too but clark is less kind of um even though he's inspirational his inspiration comes from his kind of ted lasso-ness his inspiration does not mm-hmm. come from mm-hmm. this beacon of bravery that steve rogers inhabits right. it's more of like he is just trying to be a good guy, helping everybody that he can. Th- that he make can. his parents and proud. He, make his mm-hmm. parents proud. Make his community proud. You know, um, he's just such a like he's a dork in a way that Steve Rogers is not a dork. Right. Steve Rogers is is a right. dork because he's this older guy and he's out of touch, and we can right. tease him for that. Mm-hmm. But like Steve Rogers isn't dorky. Like he may listen to older music, but it's like appropriate music for a man his age. Right. But Clark right. is a dork. <laughs> yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. it's he's this it's it uh, and this movie could end up being a great romantic comedy. People were posting mm-hmm. great clips of animation in the past couple of days of Superman and Lois and how like that dynamic works like this amazing capable woman mm-hmm. and this dorky guy. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm very excited about this too and I think that that the um the notion that it's going to be like a Superman who's 25 years old as an excuse for it not to be Henry Cavill, I think is really just an excuse. I think that there's so many reasons why it's not going to be Henry Cavill because of mm-hmm. the baggage associated with that. But also, I think that no shade to Henry Cavill's acting abilities. I think that he has a certain set of acting abilities that might not be up to par for what this character, for the kind of nuance and different shade, and just basically at a humor level. Henry Cavill yeah. can be funny, but his humor is funny where like he's Sherlock Holmes in Enola Holmes, and he's he's kind of like the the straightforward man and he's the you know he's he's the he's with the stiff upper lip and or the humor in man from uncle is not necessarily Mm -hmm. him it's the way he kind of bounces off other characters so i don't know if cavill can even do maybe what we've seen in some iterations of superman in the past this kind of very ted lasso style humor this aw shucks Mm -hmm. you know i'm like i don't think he can do that i think henry cavill is much more stoic he is a much more serious and stoic superman and that's fine and that's fine that worked for for man of steel and that worked, you know whatever they needed him for but very exciting I'll just wrap up by saying LFG boys, LFG. <laughs> <laughs> and James Gunn Absolutely. is writing it, and it's possible Absolutely. that he might direct it. So that that to me is exciting. Uh, it's also worth noting for Superman and Lois, James Gunn did say that that show will continue for at least one to two more seasons because fans obviously seem to love it. And I think for James Gunn, there's a lot of good things to take away from that show. So mm-hmm. with this movie Absolutely. not coming out until 2025, I think that you can squeeze definitely squeeze in one or two more seasons of of that show. And yeah. as a Superman fan, I wanted to have a proper ending if you are going to end it let those people know in advance and let them conclude the story in a way that feels very satisfactory to the fans and to to Mm -hmm. all the people working on it because it has been a really really good show and look if four seasons is what we get i'm happy about it as long as it's on their terms Mm -hmm. and they get to end it how they want i highly highly recommend anybody who's watching this video go to our patreon Go to the watch alongs of Superman and Lois. If you're yeah. at all curious about that show, watch it with us. We might make it be your bag because there's a <laughs> lot of people who are cynical about Superman and trying to figure out what they should really be looking yeah. for this character. Yeah. I know when we first started YouTube, I was on that boat of like Superman's boring, like whatever. Like he's just the like whatever character, right? And Adam almost kicked me off YouTube forever. He almost <laughs> banned my he almost banned my human form from appearing on camera and, and any <laughs> video on youtube ever (laughs) (laughs) but go to patreon check it out it's a fun watch you'll see what we're talking about and yeah yeah, it's just we're this is why we're excited about superman for sure for sure he's got a long prosperous future ahead of him hopefully but lanterns a live action hbo max series that will feature both Hal Jordan and John mm-hmm. Stewart. Good finally, call. I know Good that call. for years we kept talking about like, well, it should be Hal, it yeah. should be John, it should be Hal, it should be John. But the idea of putting these characters together, and also obviously, if you're existing in the Green Lantern universe, the Green Lantern core is out there. There are so many other Green Lantern characters that could cameo in the show that could then yep. spring off and become their own franchises and their own movies and TV you, shows you, and all you kinds know, of stuff. You know, Kilowog is going to show up. You know, Kilowog is going to show up, and Absolutely. it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm still in in the in the boat of i think lantern should be one of the most expansive or or just the story and and the the themes of the green lantern should be one of the most expansive characters or types of characters that they have Mm -hmm. because there's so many right and you know there's so many so many lanterns and the black lantern sagas are so uh, such huge events in in the world of, of dc uh but the good thing 
about that is I feel like we can get that through cinematic television at this point. Like Absolutely. big, huge stories. Yeah. Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings has already come yep. out. Willow, one of the best fantasy shows ever to come yep. out on television. <laughs> and I think yeah, obviously going there. off of what you're saying, I think going off of what you're saying, like this show may have been billed as like starting small because they're mm-hmm. trying to say this is more terrestrial based. It's like two space cops, yeah. but their investigation is on Earth and it's Hal and John. And But the thing is, is that they apparently discover this sort of secretive, dangerous threat, a conspiracy, whatever they right, discover. Right. If Green Lanterns are involved, you know it's got to deal with the United States of space, dude. Hell you know it's yeah, got to get dude. out there. Exactly. So I'm like, this <laughs> may be- Every quadrant of space at this point. Yeah. Right. This may be like one season of television and it's a little bit more true detective and it's a little smaller scale. But mm-hmm. I think that this could be the real, you know, beginning planting seeds of like, well, what is your overarching story, James Gunn? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you try? You know, is right. it going to have to deal with Dark Side and the New Gods? Is it going to have to deal with mm-hmm. the Green Lantern color spectrum, the whole core yeah. of all the different Green Lantern core? That's how you can pl- begin to plant the seed here. And then if we don't see a piece of it in Batman Brave and the Bold or Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow or, you know, a Superman Legacy sequel or whatever, then they can mm-hmm. build up to... We might see a, a little piece in all of those projects. Yeah. We might see nothing, right, but right. that's something that I think that Lanterns is going to hopefully introduce us to those two characters and get everybody to be like, mm-hmm. oh, dude, John Stewart's my favorite Green Lantern character or, mm-hmm, oh, right. Hal is such a great Green Lantern character. Get us mm-hmm. to fall in love with those two characters. And then from there go, we'll see them again. And when we see them again, there's going to be a thousand other Lantern characters and they're going mm-hmm. up against the Sinestro yeah. core or some, yeah. some crazy right, huge right, 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 thing. Right. So I'm and very think, hopeful about that. I think that. to your point, Augustine, also it is something that James Gunn and Peter Safran talked about was when they were creating the slate, there was, there's the constant conversation of, is this better suited for animation, television, mm-hmm. original series, Smart. or theatrical? And a lot of it obviously comes down to the scale of the show, the budget of the show, how well the potential characters or storylines could do in, in whichever format. And that I think is why Lanterns is something that is so well suited for television mm-hmm. because could you do lanterns in a two-hour movie yes you could could you do lanterns even better and do give it more justice if you mm-hmm. allow yourself to tell an eight-hour story that takes yeah. its time and introduces us to not only hal jordan and john stewart but also characters mm-hmm. like kilowog or other members of the core and really get deep into sort of the lore of of that universe then i think yeah. it it, it behooves them to do that because like Hector is saying if there's a seed in that show that leads to some greater threat in the DC universe you want it to really feel like the audience is earning it and you really want it to right. feel like the filmmakers that are making it are truly taking their time and are really invested in the long game and yo, not short of the short win. Yo, yes. you know what I just thought of? Because you mm. just said earned it. And I immediately thought of how Mark Strong just put on a yellow ring at the end of the Green Lantern movie. Right. And all of a sudden he was Sinestro, which sucked. You know what would be crazy? What if Sinestro is a member of the Lantern Corps in this show? And the Initially, whole yeah. season is him being mm-hmm. like, like Jordan three. Stewart, you think you think this is the way that the universe should be run? Don't you know anything? You know, like just like slowly yeah, going to that like that training yeah. day. Oh, this cop is way over the edge. This yeah. dude is. Yeah. Uh, this is a cap. This, this is very very is bad. This, yeah. this, this yeah. space cop is in a, in a bad form. <laughs> yeah. And at the very end, he's basically like. Fuck it. Give me a yellow ring. Give me a, like, and you're like, yeah, oh, I'll no. Take that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what you earn when you, when yeah. you turn some of these things into shows is you can really yeah. play with that and flush Ooh. that out. Superman makes sense because it's a singular character who kind of goes, yeah. is on an arc and he's the big show. But Green yeah. Lantern is a character who can kind of create a big show and then step into the yes. movie universe exactly. and bring all exactly. of this amazing sort of lore with them. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that, that yeah. is super exciting. And it's nice to finally see that Green Lantern is moving forward because it's been through so many iterations and it had the movie. And I'm like, it's time for something fresh, baby. Let's mm-hmm. go. Absolutely. <sighs> speaking of fresh, speaking of fresh. If we ever get St. Walker. As the Blue Lantern, I know, dude. Ooh. I know all of the. If, there's if so we many. Even get to that, yeah. Bro, I'm, uh, I'm just so excited to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's epic. It's let's, epic as hell, and not just that, but imagine the Green Lantern animated series. Let's watch that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good. great season. That's yeah, a one that's season, a good, but it's a good one. Brilliant. But imagine yeah. if Augustine, if they do have like a fully established sort of like new Justice League of characters, right? And it's like mm-hmm. we love their Superman, we love the Batman, and then you let some of those characters get lantern rings. Oh, oh come oh, on, oh, come oh, on! Are you kidding me? Come on. We'll on see. On top how of it that, goes. you're going to get to now add the Wildstorm characters to your collection because they're bringing mm-hmm. the authority mm-hmm. into the DC good universe. Segue. Good segue. I nice. am not super familiar. 
familiar with the plots from characters. There are a couple that I kind of know just kind of through pop culture and just, you know, through other people's knowledge. But like it's, Apollo and Midnighter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's really, really cool that these that something is being done with these characters because it kind of makes me excited because there's another corner of the DC Universe milestone characters. Static yes. Shock. I would love I to see that mm-hmm. be a possibility. Mm-hmm. And for me, when you say that you're going to bring characters that are kind of from a different comic book universe, but have been integrated into DC because the ownership yeah. changed, I'm like, great. Mm-hmm. That means that it's possible for a lot of characters to show up in the DC universe. So mm-hmm. this is really exciting. It's also going to be a, a film and they're being kind of described as the first morally gray superhero team in this DC universe that mm. yeah. they have good intentions, good. but they also good. have kind of aggressive uh, tactics to make those intentions seem good. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm excited to see what these characters are all about and how they play into the greater universe. And because it comes after Superman and lanterns and some of the other shows, it is not outside of the realm of possibilities for some of these other characters to potentially show up, which is Again, yeah, it's all part of building a universe. You know, it, it, people keep making comparisons to Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios has yet to officially release a rated R film in their franchise, like right. under their banner. Mm-hmm. And I think that the authority should be rated R. Yeah. And I think that just like how Peacemaker is a rated R show or the Suicide Squad was rated R, certain IP in this larger IP can be for an adult audience mm. and other IP like Superman or Booster Gold or Batman or whatever need to be all ages. And I think that that's a really smart approach. And if they do yeah. that, yeah. It, does, it, it would mean that you can go full on with the authority film. Maybe it doesn't go all the way to the places where the boys goes, but <laughs> you, can, right. you can have that kind of conversation in that film. And then if those characters, like you're saying, Adam, appear in something else, maybe the other thing is a PG-13 rated project, then they're just themselves, but they don't go full on to what right. they normally, <clears throat> but there wouldn't even really be the focus of the story anyway. So like, right. I think that's a, that's a great, 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 great strategy and i and i mm-hmm. fully fully hope that that's what they're going to do yeah and i totally yeah. agree with you and i think that's something that even that they've even talked about is like some projects are going to be for all ages some of it is going to be a little bit more adult themed and i think truthfully that is a huge advantage that dc has because they're owned by warner brothers and not mm-hmm. by disney mm-hmm. with disney yeah. I, I love them and right. i love the mcu but there's a lot of hesitation to make yeah. certain materials or certain pieces of storytelling that are a bit more mature and adult oriented i think now mm-hmm. they're they're willing to go a little bit further than they have before and i think when marvel studios was kind of aligned with paramount pictures that first phase it, there's moments where it gets a little bit more a little bit more graphic and a little bit more violent but once it was kind of acquired by Disney, I think that there was sort of this like understanding of like, cool, we're not going to tiptoe into the rated R territory. Whereas with mm-hmm. DC, they're really open to anything. Like you got something for all audiences, we'll take it. You got something for mature audiences, we'll take it. Mm-hmm. The Joker proved that whether it's rated R or not, if it's really good right. and or the right. character is a beloved character, people will come watch it. The Batman, yep. pretty close. It's like really yeah. on the edge of the PG-13 rating, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it was a fantastic film. So... I think yep. that is also an exciting part is that there is this sort of this um, this balance of light and dark and, and adult and all ages theme that I think is kind of important when you're doing a shared universe like this, especially mm-hmm. when it's based on so many diverse superhero characters. Like you have to yep. be willing to have some flexibility. Otherwise, eh, it's all going to feel the same. And I think that's something that yep. James Gunn and Peter Safran are definitely trying to avoid similar tones across right. the board. It's like, let's Let's change it up. Let's mix it up. Let's have everything feel different. Mm -hmm. So it really does feel like it's a filmmaker's universe while still telling a overall story that still feels like it has some sort of end game or some sort of like cohesive voice as opposed to just kind of being random. I don't know how excited you guys are about a Wonder Woman being in the DC universe. They didn't give us a Wonder Woman movie or series, but they gave us Paradise Lost. It's not Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Right. But it is Diana of Themyscira. Yep. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, depending on how you look at it, like Lanterns feels like it's a lower budget uh, answer to like, how can we tell a Green Lantern story? That's what they're going to focus on. I don't know if this is going to be lower budget or bigger budget because it's like a it looks like it could the be mascara, a fantasy a real. Epic period piece yeah you got to build everything yeah so <laughs> it's game of um, thrones that's basically how they're describing it. it's like a game of thrones show that that's yeah. really going to revolve around characters that are alive prior to diana's birth and it's going to really revolve around the politics of a world 
that is not inhabited by any man. What does that look like mm -hmm. politically? What does that look like just as a society? How do they how do they run their society if there is sort of integration between their society and the modern world? Like how are they establishing those rules? I actually do like the fact that it is something that is in a lot of ways, in many ways, a period piece, and that it precedes yeah. the inclusion of Wonder Woman because it's I think it's really going to give us a good grasp on well, how do all of these different parts of the DC universe work? Not just the characters, mm -hmm. but also the worlds that they inhabit. I think this show is going to be like the Wonder Woman comics that came out in the 80s from mm -hmm. George Perez that were also like clean reboot, but they yeah. sort of retold the origin of Wonder Woman. I think that the Patty Jenkins movie, the first Wonder Woman movie is pretty fantastic, but it is also like a romantic sort of love story at its center. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that Wonder Woman 1984 kind of missed the mark, but like how interesting is it to take the concept of Wonder Woman and go, let's bring in a bunch of, and this is what I'm hoping they're going to do. And I have a feeling they're going to do this, bring in as many talented and passionate women writers and producers and you know, directors and yeah. editors and composers and everybody who can just flex on us in this show, in this format, the full cast is going to be women. It's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's going to be awesome because that first Wonder Woman movie is so cool, but then the you immediately awesome. go to, you immediately go to World War One, and half of the movie is yeah. Chris Pine, and that's half of the reason the movie's great. Sure, it's Chris Pine, mm -hmm. but a, a story without Steve Trevor, a story without that element added to it mm -hmm. is can be really, really interesting. And I think it can be, I think it can like, re-inspire the way that that first Wonder Woman movie inspired audiences, myself yeah. included. Yeah. Everybody was so jazzed on it. Like, finally, this Wonder, this female superhero character, this woman superhero character, Paradise Lost can be that, but like, you know, imagine something like The Last of Us or Game of Thrones, but it's just women in the cast. And mm -hmm. it was almost going to be happening with Why the Last Man, but then that show got canceled. Like that promise of like mm -hmm. every character in this world is a woman except yeah. for the main character or whatever. But yeah, I, I'm I'm really, really intrigued in this. And I have a feeling this is going to even feature Diana either at, by the end of it or throughout it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to firmly establish this is who Diana is. This is what she looks like in this new DCU. This is what her mission and her goal is in this new DCU. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised either if we went through Creature Commandos, Waller, Lantern's Authority. I would not be surprised if Superman Legacy was a prequel. If Superman Legacy opened and it was like 2015, here's a story of Superman in the year 2015. So by the end of it, it's the same actor and it's like, and now we're current. So that they can almost, like they do in the comics, they when they did Crisis on Infinite Earths and rebooted everything, they still went back and did Batman Year One while the normal Batman comics were happening. And then when you caught up to normal Batman comics, they would somehow mention that, oh yeah, that was, this is like Batman's new origin. Superman Man of Steel, same thing as what happened. And the George Perez Wonder Woman book. So maybe that Superman Legacy Paradise Lost and the Batman Brave and the Bold, I feel like they're going to be the, the Trinity, reestablishing the Trinity, what they look mm -hmm. like, what their mission is about, while also basically fleshing out their history. And Batman Brave and the Bold is going to be him and his son. So they're going to establish, uh, in this universe, we have Talia al Ghul and Ra's al Ghul. And, you know, all of that history is going to be like, and maybe Dick Grayson Nightwing has already been a thing. And Tim Drake mm -hmm. Robin has already been a thing. And now we're into this Robin. Jason so, Todd's already been they, dead. But they yeah. still want, right. But they still, and now Red Hood has maybe shown up, but they still want that sort of like, like we're going to go back and flesh out what it was to bring us up to speed, but we need to reestablish Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman because maybe the previous iterations mm -hmm. didn't quite click and they are the Trinity. They're, they're the foundational right. pillars of DC. Yeah, I was actually very, very surprised. <laughs> no more beer left. <laughs> I was very, very surprised to find out that this is going to be a Batman film that features Batman and Robin, and it's going to be Damian Wayne, not Dick Grayson, mm -hmm. not Jason Todd, not Tim Drake, not Stephanie Brown. You know, this is the fifth, I think, Robin in the DC universe. So Six, really if you count. Carrie Kelly, I think, sure, was, was sure. from ba Dark Knight Returns. Right, and right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I'm, Alfred dressed up like a Robin yeah. at some point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm excited to see kind of like where this goes and how they yeah. establish this because to jump into a newer universe and to already have established a lot of elements of the Bat family, you have to kind of assume like, okay, like you're saying, Nightwing, Batgirl, the other Robins, where are they? What are they doing? What are they up to? Is Red Robin a thing? Is Nightwing a thing? You know, is the hood a thing? What kind of stuff are we going to be leaning into in this film? So there's a lot of intrigue there. And I don't want to say I'm apprehensive because I feel like James Gunn wouldn't do anything unless he felt 100% confident in it. But I'm mm -hmm. the, the Brave and the Bold is the one project that I'm like, okay. Okay, I'm gonna wait and see. I hope it all works. <laughs> are you, Adam, are you, will. Wearing Matt Reeves, are you wearing a Matt Reeves Batman shirt? Oh, hell right yeah, now dude. As you're 
Oh, yeah. See, yeah, of course. Of course, you're on the fence about that project. You're like, I don't know. Yeah. I already got my yeah, Robert yeah, yeah. Pattinson. Uh, I'm good. Well, I mean, again, it's it's like we haven't seen we haven't seen Robin in a movie in 25 years. We haven't seen Batgirl in a movie in 25 years. The previous version of the universe has really tiptoed around the Bat family. Titans has kind yeah. of established a bad family, but Titans is the show and, you know, the show's ending. And I do feel like it's been a major component of Batman's world that has been missing. And it's something that Absolutely. really influences and kind of changes who Batman is. He goes from being someone who is very much a secluded loner in the shadows, fighting evil. Yeah. And then when he brings on these additional family members, he becomes a father and that He's really dead, changes yeah. his dynamic. So I'm excited yeah. to see kind of like what, what that's going to look like. Did you guys see the internet set? If the Batman is going to be like this, this um, father figure that's annoyed by this rambunctious kid, it's got to be Pedro Pascal. Right? Is that what's going to happen? And Absolutely. I was like, Absolutely. That's what's got to happen. Yeah, we have Pedro. the internet's daddy. Yeah. You need yeah, to have Pedro do as that the shit. bat daddy. Do that shit. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. He's got a great, yeah, he can do it. He's got a great voice. I'm, he can do it. I'm apprehensive about this project. And you want to know why? Because it's not Batman the Brave and the Bold, the animated series. <laughs> Yeah. That's why I'm That's right right about this project. But it's not you know Dietrich what? Bader as Batman. <laughs> I guarantee you it's can, not going to be him as Batman. Can I John DiMaggio is not going to gonna be in it as Mr. Freeze. Like, yeah. it's, it's just, why do this? Let why me, do this to me? Let, let, this is let a let personal attack on there. me, James Gunn. I'm so sad. Me, Adam, <laughs> Hector, let me be sad. Okay. And you know what? <laughs> let me cry. Here's another, here's, here's uh, another, here's <laughs> another stain on Zaslav. They're taking Batman the Brave and the Bold off of HBO Max. So how the hell are you supposed That's to watch it? Shitty. Go get the Blu-ray. Shitty. Go order those Blu-rays. I'm buying the Blu-rays Blu tonight. Blu I'm order buying them the Blu-rays tonight. tonight. Put them on your Plex server, that is, folks. That's all I can say. Because there has been so many good Batman adaptations, but that is hands down it's my favorite of, of any Batman edit. Wow. I like it more than Lego Batman. I think I think wow. this version it's of Batman amazing. is just well, the funniest, me, the smartest, me, just everything. Let me throw something out to you, Augustine, because I'm so glad you brought this up, right? This movie, they just said it's Batman and Damian Wayne Robin, and they didn't say anything else. Why mm -hmm. didn't they call the movie Batman and Robin or, you know, Batman and Son or something that really hones in on that? They called it the brave and the bold. And let me tell you something, that name, that title is a quintessential DC Comics historical title. It is very important to DC's mm -hmm. history. It is a classic comic book trope, which is... Each issue is going to have Batman teaming up with some other character, whether it's Plastic Man mm -hmm. or Blue Beetle or Booster Gold or what. And they did that in that show you're describing. And that's why the show is yep. so great. So yep. I posit this. What if this movie is also a stealth man? Here's a bunch of other characters in the DC universe that we haven't told you about yet. But maybe our Plastic mm -hmm. Man is going to show up in this. And maybe Green yeah. Arrow, our iteration, is going to show up in this. And maybe, you know, mm -hmm. Blue Beetle will return in this. And maybe Booster Gold mm -hmm. will be de debut in this. There could yeah. be a full on celebration of other characters that Batman has a dynamic with. If they're already going the route of here's Damian Wayne, which brings with it a history. He's eight or nine years old, maybe 12, however old they're going to make him, which means that Batman and then kind of like was seduced by or seduced, depending on how you look into it, Talia al Ghul all those years ago, mm -hmm. which means he was Batman. He was active as Batman for at least that long, probably longer. So in all of that time, what's happening in James Gunn's DC universe? Just Peacemaker is active? Like that's it? Just the yeah. Suicide Squad? Hell no. There's tons of characters running around we haven't met yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. the, the title being The Brave and the Bold, maybe we'll see Momoa Aquaman show up and go outrageous and <laughs> outrageous. flip his hair. Or, that would be or maybe we'll, we'll see brief glimpses of like Batman taking on Damien and being apprehensive about it or reluctant to it. And then Nightwing, mm -hmm. Dick Grayson is like, Bruce, he's your son. Also, you team up all the time. You've teamed up with Green Arrow. They cut to that. You've teamed up with, you know, Bawana Beast. They cut to that. Like Z Z Zatanna. Mm -hmm. Like they could, they, this could be the real Classic sort of man. showcase. Played by Tom Kenny. Classic, man. Played by Tom Kenny. <laughs> I would say Ben Schwartz, but so don't, don't don't hold out hope that this could not be a full on celebration of honestly Outrageous. one of the best animated shows of all time. Brave and the Bold, <laughs> like that. Wait, Adam, have you seen Brave and the Bold? I've only seen a few okay. episodes. I haven't seen Dude. the whole series. I, I also is, propose that as a Patreon watch along, but that's we already have is, so much on our plate. I'm just adding so much homework. No, there's still 2024. <laughs> it's S -tier. Yeah. Right, true. right. We have to be yeah. watching something yeah. as we get ready for this movie coming out in 2020. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Whatever. Right. Um, guys, um, I don't yeah. know what we need to do, but we need to figure out a way to get our good buddy Hashtag. Alex Puccinelli as Booster Gold. Alex Puccinelli for Booster. How do, we do, how do we make this James happen? Gunn. I've been tagging James that's Gunn it. on Twitter. That's it. You know, I, I, that's all I can do. 
Anybody watching doesn't know who Alex Puccinelli is. First of all, what's wrong with you? Secondly, <laughs> you need to go to Augustine's Twitter because he posted this video that these gentlemen helped me make as an audition for 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 DC all those years ago to become a, a, mm -hmm. a correspondent, a helpful host for DC Daily. Uh, Alex Puccinelli was born to play this role. And if he's not going to be mm -hmm. Booster Gold, mm -hmm. they're going to hire somebody else. Yeah, then uh, we gotta get an or someone. Yeah, it's not gonna whatever. be as good. So just go check out that video. Watch it for yourself. Judge for yourself, and then decide if you want to. You know, maybe post hashtag Alex Puccinelli for booster. Mm -hmm. Alex Pooch for boost. Pooch I think it's what gold. Said, right. Alex. Poochster gold. I think it's Pooch. Poochster gold or pooch for yeah. booster or something mm -hmm. like that. Either yeah. way, we'll, anyway, we'll, we'll start spamming it out. Yeah. Start, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just keep an eye on our social media. Yeah, I, I'm excited yeah, yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah. You know, I think the character is a very interesting character. Someone who comes from the future into the modern day to try to really like live the life of a superhero. And he's and in this version, mm -hmm. he's going to be dealing with a with a form of imposter syndrome. I think that's mm -hmm. really interesting because I do think that as people, not just in obviously the creative industry, but just in general, you know, that is something that I think a lot of us sort of deal with in a lot of ways yeah. because just the way that the world functions nowadays and social media being a big part of the world and all that sort of stuff. So I am excited to see what, what Booster Gold brings to the DC universe as a character who is from the future. But also, I hope that it opens up the door to opportunities to bring other future characters into the DC universe. You know, whether it's things like, yeah. I'm going to throw a real curveball, things like Legion of Superheroes and stuff like that, I think would be really cool. And James Gunn is a guy mm -hmm. who could do it. Who could do yeah, it? Absolutely. So that that has me really excited for that. And, you know, maybe this is the project where we get to see Blue Beetle show up again and really establish mm -hmm. that this version or the version from the 2023 film is, in fact, the version that will be fully integrated into the dc universe i think that would be really really cool so it's not full-on she-hulk levels of like breaking the fourth wall mm -hmm. but booster gold could be another fun episodic establishing of who's active in the dc universe like yeah. who does booster try to go and rub rub shoulders with but eventually just gets booted out like you're not in this club dude nobody wants <laughs> you here that's the kind right. like this pathetic guy is the opposite of she-hulk she's not pathetic but she has those millennial uh um struggles that yeah. we all do and boosters like that plus he's obnoxious but he is brave at his core he's a fantastic <laughs> yeah. character this could be another great here's a show that's helping us establish what this world is and even do the great thing that like booster can rattle off some stuff that hasn't happened yet and then it's up to this franchise to actually go and deliver it. which is always dude it's the best when you read a comic book and they're like oh this is just like you know <laughs> like the war of the lanterns or whatever yeah. and that hasn't happened yet. you're like oh snap this is <laughs> yeah. gonna happen and then they get to it it's the best exactly the best, yeah. exactly uh, i'm really excited for supergirl to make her return her cinematic return it's been uh it'll be by the time the movie comes out it'll be well over 30 years uh if not 40 years actually since uh the 1984 film so i'm Wait, excited don't about say that this. when is this when is the movie coming out we don't well, know it has we no date yet but out. if superman legacy is coming out in 2025 this will likely come out somewhere in like 2026 or 2027 so you guys i just realized in 2027 i'm gonna be 40 years of age yeah me too bro i'll be 40 in a year and a half guys <laughs> Two years, dude. Basically, oh, you're yeah, dead. We've been doing you're this. Well, dead. By the time, oh, by the time we God. die, we'll go through eight iterations of the DC universe. So shut your now mouth. Now I don't want to do. do this anymore. Now I don't even want to do this anymore. I just realized how old I'm going to be in 2027. I don't even want to do this anymore. Oh, oh man, both of you. Oh man. Um, something that I think is exciting about this project is Tom King, who wrote the Woman of Tomorrow comic book series, is on That's board. Awesome. I don't know if he's going to be writing it or if he's going to be in a consulting manner. I know he's a part of sort of the writer's room that they created. I'm yeah. already, I'm already reading it on gorgeous. Hoopla, Hoopla Digital, yeah. baby. Free comic yeah. books online. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm already yeah. going to start reading it. Hopefully yeah, the I'll art give you a short review on Chexicans. Yeah, so, the art, yeah, artwork looks amazing. And um, it's an interesting story, you know, as, as you know, Kara Zarel is the character who kind of survives living on remnants of Krypton for a little over... 12 years 12 to 14 years and then comes to earth so a character who goes through that kind of a trauma where she survives but also sees the people around her who have survived kind of die and then comes to yeah. earth i'm imagining that it makes her a very sort of a character with a huge chip on her shoulders and and not exactly the same as her cousin and i think that is very interesting yeah. i think you have to have sort of this interesting dynamic between this super family where one character maybe is very hopeful and optimistic, and I don't want to say that Supergirl would necessarily be pessimistic, but maybe she has a little bit more of what we would call a realistic outlook on the world. And I think that could be mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. such a fun dynamic for these two characters to have. Totally. Especially yeah. after, like, I really thought that the Supergirl TV show was 
mostly really great and had yeah. a great hopeful version of totally. Kara zor But if you have Superman already kind of embodied, like Supergirl, the show was basically a Superman show. Like right. that tone was mm-hmm. was Supergirl's tone. Like she took it and she's like, I'm the Superman of this world. But if Superman in this universe is already that, like you're saying, Adam, to bring in a more jaded, a more cynical Supergirl, I think is a real, who's like younger than Clark, mm-hmm. but she's like, you don't know the shit I've seen. Is so funny to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah so great. exactly. And I want to, I want to highlight too. everybody. Everybody's been mentioning Tom King, the fantastic writer who wrote this comic. Augustine, you're, you showed off that gorgeous artwork. The artist mm-hmm. is Bill Quee Evely, wonderful artist, just gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. work has worked on uh, wonder woman and Sandman universe, the dreaming and Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Uh, so awesome. Yeah. Follow them on social media. Hopefully like theirs and Tom King's, you know, more people like checking out this book right now is yeah. like helping them financially I mean, like that's the, that's the cool thing is you know when comics specifically are shouted out and it can help yeah. a comic creator wow well, wonderful. i think yeah. to me that is something that i really have enjoyed about this slate reveal james gunn has not really held back in directly addressing the comic books that have inspired a lot of the movies and the comic book artists and the writers who have created these comic books for me that signals hopefully and you know like these things can go any which way But to me, that hopefully signals, one, we're going to start acknowledging a lot of the comic book artists and the writers who are responsible for telling these stories that we're adapting. Because I do Mm -hmm. think that, you know, Marvel has has had a lot of hits. But if there's one thing that, you know, that everyone has sort of noticed is like they don't really highlight a lot of the people who've contributed to the Marvel stories outside of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I would say that they Mm -hmm. sort of get the most recognition outside of that. It's kind of scarce. Like it's mostly people doing their own research on who creates these characters. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that as the, as the co-CEO of DC studios and someone who is, who is directly in charge of a lot of these projects happening, that he's not shying away from saying, you know, Frank quietly, Grant Morrison, uh, you know, all these people who are responsible for contributing to these stories. And the fact that, he's not even shying away from saying these are straight up adaptations of these books which is love that doesn't happen too much love that he he was the guy also he's been doing this since uh the suicide squad and guardians of the galaxy he's talked yeah. about the sort some of the jim starlin stuff and you know some totally. some of that inspiration that he grew up with but in suicide squad he put john ostrander in the movie yes. like he gave him a cameo mm. and it's that thing where i think that that when when these studios do that for a comic creator, it might help them financially, like just from the residuals of a cameo of them being in a movie, more than their entire career Run of, of comic, comic books. books yeah. <laughs> work, right, just right, depressing right. as hell. So I'm yeah. like, do that shit. Like, you know, uh, it was so great to see Kelly Sue DeConnick in Captain Marvel for a second. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Mad Fraction was only hired to work on Hawkeye because he was friends with the guy who was working on the Hawkeye show. And I feel like they should go to them and hire them out as consultants, hire them out as artists Mm -hmm. to, you know, conceptually to work on stuff. I mean, the MCU started because of Adi Granoff, who was a comic book Iron Man artist, who was basically Mm -hmm. hired by Favreau and whoever to be like, let's conceptual, let's do the concept art for like Iron Man, the movie. And and so much of that, that visual language kind of comes from that. So yeah, I'm also really hopeful about that. And and it would be great to see in all of these or as many as they can projects to like, you know, call them out, acknowledge a comic book creator, a writer, yeah. a, you know, mm-hmm. put them in the thing, have them give them a cameo. Yeah, Come on. Give them that sure. credit. Give them that credit. I like, the, I like how they kind of did that with Dan Slott in, in the She-Hulk show. Like they kind yep. of added yep. his name in, in certain and things. I think, so I think, I think they he, should give they, their props. They, I think they offered him a, a cameo, but he was like, I'm not going to do it because COVID is not going to, like, he was just like mm-hmm. not down to go and just show up and whatever the thing was. Yeah. Keep doing that. Like Dan Slott should yeah. be in She-Hulk season two yeah. if they ever do it. Like yeah. all of that stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the absolutely. last project that they announced, which is, which surprisingly does not conclude chapter one, Gods and Monsters. This is just the first part of this slate is Swamp Thing. I, mm. in the back of my mind would have been like, God, I really hope they would announce a Swamp Thing, th- a Swamp Thing feature or series. That would be so cool. Mm-hmm. I actually really did enjoy f- the first season of the Swamp Thing series on DC Universe. Did mm-hmm. I think it was yeah. flawed? Yes. Was I really impressed with what they did with the budget that they had? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really solid debut for that character. And to have this character come into the DC Universe, a character who very much embraces a darker, a more potentially more cynical, potentially more violent part of the DC Universe. I think is really, Mm -hmm. really cool. I think, again, it goes back to them being open to and exploring varying tones within the DC universe, allowing some things to be for Quadrant, for all ages, allowing some things Mm -hmm. to be maybe for more mature audiences. This is also a great gothic romance, Mm -hmm. the Swamp Thing stuff. Mm -hmm. But also you could do a lot of great seed planting 
pun intended, of yeah, like Justice. the storylines that are going to pay off with Justice League Dark, yeah. or you know, bring in Animal Man, and how does Animal Man factor into like if if Swamp Thing is the green and deals with the green, like who's dealing with the red? Is that Animal right. Man? Is that mm-hmm. this character? And that first run of New Fifty Two Animal Man was really Ooh. solid. It was in. It was like intense. Talking yeah. about True Detective, it was like some Hannibal shit. We were like, "Oh my god!" So they could really go there. And I was going to say, yeah. even weave in what Swamp Thing deals with at his level of like he is this protector of Earth in in some level. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Green Lantern story is involved, right? Yeah. Because whatever they find yeah, is like, "Oh, absolutely. something's something's bad with the Earth," and then Swamp Thing could follow up with that. Or what? Mm-hmm. Like, there's just so many ways you could bring in Swamp Thing, the character, the concept to whatever larger stories they want to tell a film a live action film that's gonna be good that's, that's gonna be gonna real be good hella yeah. tight hella tight i don't it's have any strong hella attachments hella tight, to the swamp thing so i'm yeah i'm, I'm in like For let's sure. just see these yeah. characters i like that i almost am imagining swamp thing as a werewolf by night situation like just a straight yeah. up yeah. style 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 totally. yeah, super stylized that's and, what so we're we're done with the slate. That's what I want to see from yeah. this whole franchise as a whole. Super stylized, like let's let the creators create while still being a part of, you know, this bigger universe and, and having things not be messy continuity wise. I want to see stylized. I want to see director's visions come to life. Uh, I'd like mm-hmm. to see an Edgar Wright style movie next to a werewolf by night style movie. Like let's give us let's give us some visual yeah. variety here. As to what we're looking for or like what what this universe can bring. This is, I'm incredibly hopeful about everything. My, yeah. my biggest takeaway I'll say is that out of everything that has happened in the past few years with the DC brand, whether it's movies, TV, comics, whatever, this announcement of potential movies and shows that they're working on has gotten me more excited and interested in reading DC comics again. Oh, absolutely. Than any, mm. Right. Than anything in years, yeah. because because of all the sort of like corporate fuckery that's been going on at Warner Brothers, it's really mm-hmm. tr- when they canceled Batgirl, which I'm hoping and I know that Peter Safran was like, I do think that it was kind of an unreleasable film and that David Zaslav mm-hmm. made the right call. It was a tough call, but I think it was going to be good for the brand. That still kind mm-hmm. of feels a little bit like corporate speak. And, you know, he's mm-hmm. the guy and he can't really, he probably can't in the press release say, yeah, man, it was a damn good movie, turns out, actually. And we wish we could yeah. release it, but we yeah. can't because our boss says we can't. He can't say that kind of stuff. All of those kinds of things, the fact that they're pulling off things off of HBO Max, the, you know, mm-hmm. the the various sects of the fandoms fighting all the time. Like, it's maybe not stoked about DC as a brand. And I've loved DC mm-hmm. since I was a kid. I've really been enjoying phase four of the MCU, even though a lot of people online, especially like, nope, not good, not as good as Endgame. But because all these new funky, weird characters, I've like, I've loved watching all this stuff with you guys. And I love watching Peacemaker, but that was, and Superman and Lois, but those are sort of drops in the ocean of like, we watched Loki and Moon Knight and She-Hulk mm-hmm, and, right. you know, WandaVision and all the- Versus consistency. And, I, and I, the past few years have been so into what Marvel's been doing, but I'm also trying to like read Marvel comics again and go back yeah. a couple of years and check that stuff out. And everything mm-hmm. coming out of DC has just bummed me out more and more. Even comicsology, this, which doesn't have to do with DC specifically, but the comics industry, all of this news of yeah. Amazon messing with, it's all so depressing. But this- yeah has tied in with the fact that I was going to say earlier, James Gunn was like, I'm t- I'm working with my friend Jim Lee to try and ensure mm-hmm. that like when these projects come out, that there's like an imprint new collection of the thing that we're basing it off of or inspired by or whatever. That kind of like, that's the corporate synergy I like because it's, yeah. it's respecting yeah. that source material that I know James Gunn loves, loves deep, dearly, deeply loves comic books, respects and loves comic mm-hmm, books. So mm-hmm. all of these announcements, I'm like, dude, I want to go back and, and reread Swamp Thing or, oh, this makes me want to read uh, mm-hmm. Creature Commandos, which I've never read, admittedly, or like yeah. I has, still yeah. have not had a chance to read Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. And and Augustine, yep. you're reading it right now. That's my yep. biggest to- takeaway is I am hopeful for that kind of, that kind of energy, that kind of feeling. You know, all of this is in flux. All of this remains to be seen. Who knows what else is going to happen? Do I think Momoa is going to be Lobo in Superman Legacy? Hell yeah, I think. But they're not going to announce it until after Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to. They're not going to announce it. They're not going to let that go, go right now. They're mm-hmm. not going to no, right no, no, wait. No. Aquaman no. and the Lost Kingdom comes out. You know, makes eight hundred million what, dollars. Here's a weekend. What I challenge you guys 
to do yeah. for the next episode of Chexicans. Read a comic book from one of the things you're most excited about yeah. from this slate. Yeah. And we'll talk yeah. about it and then we'll geek Adam out just about be how excited Superman we are. Comics. He's just reading Superman yeah. comics. <laughs> That's it. That's it. He's rereading Superman comics That's all fine. day. You can read one fine. or you can read multiple <laughs> and then it'll be like a little mini comic book club for that yeah. episode. So we could talk mm-hmm. about it and just keep going about how excited we are about these things. Yeah. I mean, I have to echo a lot that of a he- Hector's sentiments because... I, I also, and I, I know that this is the case for a lot of DC fans. I feel like a lot of us have kind of felt burned and it's, it's not, it's, I wouldn't say it's any one particular person's fault. It's just an amalgamation right. of an unfortunate shitstorm of things that have happened over the last seven years mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. have just led to my excitement for DC kind of going down. And I enjoy watching the Marvel stuff with you guys. And I like going to see the movies, but in the back of my mind, every time we walk out of a Marvel thing or we end a Marvel show, I'm always like... I want this for DC. I want to feel this energy. I want to feel this excitement. I want to watch all of this stuff and I want to give it as much love as we, you know, we give all the Marvel stuff. And I agree this, this slate has made me so excited to go and read comic books. And, and, and a lot of it has to do with James Gunn's enthusiasm, his love for the comic books. Like you're saying the fact that he calls those comic books and those creators out and mentions like, if you want to be caught up with what we're doing, or if you want any any slightest bit of insight into what we're doing. Here are the books that you should be looking at. I love that Mm -hmm. so much because I'm in agreement. I think more people just period across the board should be reading comic books, reading the source material and really understanding that just how much variance exists out there with every single character in every universe that, that exists. And there were no video game announcements yet, but I'm excited to see how that also interweaves into this universe Mm -hmm. and even more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Apparently I was going to say, apparently he said, maybe as an example, James Gunn was like, maybe there'll be a video game that bridges the gap between Superman legacy and Supergirl woman of tomorrow. Like that kind of, that's wow. the kind of mm-hmm. thing they're going to do with gaming projects. Yeah. It's not just going to be mm-hmm. sort of random one off, you know, that stuff that James Gunn was saying was so effing funny <laughs> and so true. He's like, mm-hmm. they were selling off their IP to any creative that was like <laughs> winking at the executives, you know, like, you know, get, like just making them feel good, buttering yeah. them up. And I'm like, damn, dude, yeah. that's true. <laughs> that's hella true. Yeah. All that yep. stuff makes me super excited. And I don't know, I, I'm just feeling really hopeful and optimistic about the future. And look, I know that for me personally, getting through this year's phase of movies is going to be a little bit of an uphill battle for me and i'm still going to be mm-hmm. walking out of the flash questioning like how is this all this going to work but i think yeah. once i get over that and i and i just let those movies let those movies be and let them be the experience that they are and then we get into the two appetizer projects which is the animated series <laughs> and the waller show but once we get to superman i think for me i'll finally be like all right all right cool we've made it mm-hmm. it's all good Maybe yeah. it was a little bit of a fumble or a little bit of a struggle to get there, or maybe it was super flawless and they just executed so well that I'm like, eh, you did it. You convinced me that you could do it. So I'm going to be hopeful and optimistic about this universe because I feel like the DC universe has had enough pessimism sprinkled throughout it for the last eight years and yeah. ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. So previously I said that I was going to be boycotting the Flash movie. I think James yeah. Gunn changed my mind today, given his enthusiasm, given sure. his hopefulness for the future, given that he, I think he said today that it's one of the greatest superhero movies he's ever seen. I think there was a tweet that he said something around yeah. around those lines. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just like, listen, yeah. that does carry some weight. I don't know weight. if it's corporate it speak. I don't know if you it's know, just he, like he, yeah. service. We'll, I don't know. We'll see. And but it's the thing about James Gunn is I think that he has matured as a storyteller. And I think that the things that are mm-hmm. in his stories now are much more thoughtful and aware than his stuff mm-hmm. was years ago. We know what yeah. his style is like and how it suits the fringe characters like Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. Perfectly suited yeah. for that stuff. Adam is so excited about Superman Legacy and that is gonna be make or break mm-hmm. because these first two projects before Superman Legacy are right up James Gunn's alley. They're the weird yeah. fringe characters, kind of a spinoff of Suicide Squad, then the cool badass character who is a spinoff of Suicide Squad, then yeah. you get Superman. Yeah. The real question for this whole endeavor is gonna be, can James Gunn, with his knowledge of the brand, and his ability as a storyteller, as a writer, as a director, maybe. Can someone mm-hmm. like him really give the characters that aren't the fringe and kind of, you know, like sarcastic and kind of edgy characters, give them that earnestness and that weight that they deserve? 
I would look at Guardians of the Galaxy. I'd look at Suicide Squad. Those movies still have heart yeah. in them, even if they are yeah. funny and sometimes the jokes don't always hit. And, you know, even a couple of years removed, it's like the, some of the humor from like the first Guardians movie maybe isn't doesn't hold up the best. But you look at Suicide mm-hmm. Squad and there's so much. The entire moment at the end of the film, the score, the title of that track is Ratism. As all, you know, as Ratcatcher 2, that whole mo- moment with Ratcatcher 2 and, uh, and Bloodsport, really, mm-hmm. really, wait, Bloodsport? Bloodshot? Bloodshot. Bloodshot. Uh, Bloodsport mm-hmm. is Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, <laughs> Bloodsport is it's, the epic 80s movie. You know, it's still all like, that's another big challenge too, is is can James, yeah. is James Gunn the right guy for the job? I know that James Gunn is the guy who right. loves and respects comics, no doubt, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But is he the right guy for this job? We'll find out as soon as some of these projects, and the, the big one being the Superman legacy project. Yeah. When that comes out, will he be able to get everybody on board, even folks who might not love James Gunn's style? Because he certainly has a style. Mm-hmm. He has a voice. He has a sense of humor. And that doesn't fit for every character. And that and that's also not everybody's cup of tea. You know, I know people whose mm-hmm. Guardians mm-hmm. is their favorite MCU movie. And I know people mm-hmm. who are like, not a fan. I don't like it. But, yeah. you know, or or they don't mm-hmm. like the rest of James Gunn's sort of um filmography, you know, Slither and yeah. Super and all that right, stuff. Right, right, right. Um and you know, it is his trauma roots, which are gross. Uh they're gross and they don't hold up. <laughs> and but yeah. um but yeah. of course they don't you know it's of course they do not. That's <laughs> that's absolutely they it, there's some there are some horrific and really cringe worthy <laughs> moments and mm-hmm. jokes coming from Listen, James folks, Gunn and his brain and everything. Start but, somewhere. But, in every yeah. aspect of their career. Yeah. yeah. I, well, but so I think far. but I think that is a huge testament to to how he has evolved. He is not just a writer, he's, he's, he is not just a filmmaker. He is now very visionary and very the executioner of a shared universe. Uh good good news for yeah. you, Hector. Robert Dubois, aka is in fact blood sport, so you got it. <laughs> a blood sport, not blood shot? <laughs> blood sport. Wait. Dead shot and blood sport. Blood sport. Oh, okay. That can't be right. Will Smith, dead that shot. Can't be right. Idris Elba, blood sport. Bro, ah, blood okay. sport is blood the sport. is the movie. Is the Jean Claude Van Damme yeah. movie? But it's yeah, also you're, right. the you're messing with me. That's also the character's name. Wait, Bloodshot is the Vin Diesel. Uh, bloodshot is the Vin Diesel v- Valiant comic book movie. That's right. Sport. Bloodshot is the Valiant guy. It is blood sport. You're absolutely right. It's in the double blood sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that well, note, good, uh, I'm really, I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to find out more. Obviously, there's also stuff about the DC Elseworlds brand, which includes the Joker, the Batman, Superman, and Lois stuff that is not part of the main continuity. There's going to be more stuff in that universe as well. I'm sure we'll talk about it at some point once they reveal more things about it. Tanahisi Coates is still working on a Superman project. Right. It's still in development. We don't have any information hey. about it. So whenever we get to that Teen point, Titans we will Go discuss those great. things. Teen it's Titans Go show. is a part Teen of that Titans as well. Funny. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm really happy that they finally established that DC Elseworlds brand to finally yeah. just say like if it's not main continuity is it's Elseworlds and that's also I, gonna I promise you yeah. in the pitch room they pitched that and the executives at Warner Brothers were like this. What is that? What's it? What's, what's, what's an else world? What are you, what's it? They said, what did it say? What? What it else what is? What does that matter? What, what, what it else is? What it is? What is? What is? What is? What else it is? is? <laughs> What did he say? I don't know what he said. Soda? What, what did he say? What did he say? <laughs> Fountain drink? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Why did not say sauna, stupid? Why did not say sauna? And then James Gunn had to be like, it's important for you to establish this so that comic book nerd audiences. <laughs> That's the other thing, too, that even just labeling this DCU yeah. is yeah. like God. important and significant because it's yeah. like, we're not going to let a fake name made up <laughs> sarcastically by a person making fun of our plan, the DCEU. Mm-hmm catch on and then be the thing that the studio also is like runs with oh, is that the oh, name yeah. i didn't know yeah. that was a name what it is it is that it is it don't okay we'll run with what it, it is? Don't do that. is that what it is Boof. what it is it Wolf. <laughs> buzz your girlfriend Wolf. Uh, <laughs> but of course let us know your thoughts down in the comments below let us know what projects you're excited for the most if this got you pumped up to read more comic books let us know what you're reading what's on your pull list let us know there's so much great stuff out there and if you would like us to maybe revisit some projects batman brave and the bold maybe we've got to look into some other things that are part of the DC universe, whether they connect or not, I think it'd be fun to revisit some stuff. Let us know down in the comments below. Tune into our Checkskins podcast. Links are down in the description for that as well. Check out all the reactions we're doing on Patreon. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.